I want to show you how I work with Mongoose, so I'll set up a simple project and I'll go step by step from setup to publish. What might be useful for you here is how to set up Mongoose in a TypeScript project, how to construct the Mongoose schemas and do validations in Mongoose, uh, how to do recursive Mongoose MongoDB queries and geospatial queries, and uh, in the end, how to publish to a private GitHub NPM registry and read from it. Uh, before starting the setup, I want to show you the type of collection I work with. It's called Locations. Locations has a location type, and it can be either a country, a city, or a district. Uh, since country can have multiple cities and cities multiple districts, add the self-referencing property, and it will be useful for doing recursive queries later on. A locations collection has a geometry field. It's a geojson, and it is a point containing a latitude and a longitude. Setting up a repository. Since I'm not very good with naming things, I'll set up an original name, demo mongoose TypeScript. For starters, it will be a private project because I want to show you how to publish to a private NPM registry and at the end of the tutorial, I'll make it public. So choosing a license, it will be MIT license. Git ignore template might be node. Let's see what we have. Yeah, node is perfect. Okay, adding a readme, and that's it. Okay, so next stop is that we are going to clone this repository. So just copying this SSH URL and pasting it here. Okay, let's see what kind of branch we have here. Let's see if git ignore has everything we need. Uh, I don't think it has everything we need because I like to use idea IntelliJ for developing. Okay, this is useless and I'm pasting my own. So this is the only uh, types of folders and files I need to ignore. Okay. Now initing our npm project. So it will basically be enter, 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 and we'll edit the package JSON as we go along. So for now it's okay. Anything our TypeScript project. So we have a TypeScript project here. Let's install Mongoose. Okay, now that we have installed Mongoose, I like to copy test config to test config test JSON. Okay. Because uh, I will also have, I will have source folders and test folders. And everything that's in test folders only needs to be compiled during tests. So let's edit yes config. Okay, so we have a lot of options here, but since I already did uh, this demo project in advance, I'll just copy and explain what's important. So Uh, this is important because I'll be publishing uh, whatever I write in the source directory to this directory. 
And since it will be a NPM library, I also need the declaration set to true. Because if you're importing this library to a TypeScript project, uh, if this is set to false, I think it might complain. Uh, skip lip check, uh, it's by default true. Uh, so when compiling uh, TypeScript files, it just says uh, don't recheck my node modules. And this is just uh, paths. Since I will be using a source directory, I want to uh, I want to alias uh, my imports, so I don't have uh, relative imports, which are ugly. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, when uh, when compiling, I want to compile everything that's in source directory and exclude everything that's in tests or node modules. And now on to editing a uh, test. Same thing. So, uh, same thing with aliasing. And uh, that's about it. Let's see. Let's see my license. Okay. This looks okay. Now on to configuring testing, and that's why I created the additional TS config test JSON. So calling in just. Okay, uh, we need to install, since this is a TypeScript project, we need to install typings for Jest and uh, TSJest, which is a transformer to, that enables us to run Jest uh, scenarios in a TypeScript project. And the last library, MongoDB memory server, uh, will be used for unit testing to edit uh, yes just config js uh, that's why i needed uh, this config test json and that's why i needed uh, tss so we have a lot of options here but i'll just paste what's important so we want coverage to be run when i run just tests clear mocks on every test run uh, this is important. So it says transform anything that's a TypeScript file with TSJS. And uh, when uh, compiling TypeScript files, read from tsconfig test JSON. Otherwise, default would be tsconfig JSON. And uh, this is also important. So earlier you seen uh, aliasing that uh, for anything that is in source file, uh, alias with, with models, but it's not enough for Jest. Uh, it won't recognize the module import. So you need to add a module name, the mapper, which says map everything that says models import from root dir uh, source directory. So it's a similar setting it's a similar setting as in tsconfig.json, but just, uh, just doesn't know how to recognize this. So let's see now how our package.json looks like. Okay, so test script is set to be run by Jest. I like to configure linting. See. We have here. Okay, check syntax and run problems. Import export. Our project runs in node. 
project runs in node and I want the config to be in JSON. And I use npm. So let's see how our slint.cjson looks like. Okay, seems okay. I also want to add another script. Okay, so script will be called lint. And it says lint everything that's in source directory. Now when I run lint, it will probably fail. Huh. Why will it fail? Because I don't have a source directory. But that's okay because we'll create it in a second. Next up, I want to configure formatting. So configuring formatting starts with editor config file. You might be familiar with editor config. It's recognized by your IDE and it's used to consolidate uh, your writing style. Okay, so for this project, I want the indenting to be done with space, indenting size to be should be two spaces. Uh, and uh, this cells is self-explanatory. So saving it. So just to be extra sure, I'll install also a prettier. Okay. Uh, prettier is nifty package that knows how to read from editor config, but also has some additional properties that you can set. For instance, it would be print width. So print width, we'll set it here. I like to use 120. Usually people use either 80 or 120. Depends on your preference. Let's add another script. It's called prettier. And prettier command runs uh, reformatting. Uh, prettier command runs reformatting of anything that's in either a source or test directory. That's a TypeScript file. Okay, so let's see if I wrote it okay. Seems okay. Let's see now. If I run prettier, it will not run on anything because there's no source or test directory. We'll create it in a second, but I want to first add a pre-commit hook. So maybe you know about this or not, but in your git directory, there's a hooks directory and uh, it doesn't run any hooks, but you can uh, see an example like a pre-commit, yeah, I'll create a pre-commit hook. 
and make it executable. And executable will contain a script that says notifies you that it's running a formatting and it just calls a prettier script that we earlier written. Okay, let's see now if I run a pre-commit. That's okay. We're not done here with the setup. I also want to set up a GitHub workflow. And GitHub workflow should uh, run uh, lint, install, and test. And GitHub workflow is set up in GitHub workflows. Okay. We'll create a YAML file. Uh, this is the acronym CI for continuous integration. So it says uh, run on every push or pull request to main branch. It runs on uh, two node versions. And what it does, it installs the packages, runs lint script and runs a test script. If any of it fails, the continuous integration is marked as a fail. Okay. So what we have now is our configuration for testing, linting, formatting, GitHub workflow. Only what we don't have is any of the modules that we are going to test. So for a dummy example, I'll create a module. J. Uh, what we're missing here is a source directory and also test directory. Okay. And for this example, I'll add a sum module and it only contains a function called a sum. Uh, I'm adding any here because I want the linter to complain first. That's how I usually test stuff if they work, they have to fail first. Okay. And the formatter should also reformat this. So I'm also testing if the formatter works. Let's create, let's create a test file. Okay. Test is called sums to numbers and sums to numbers calls a sum one and one should equal three which is not true I know and expect is missing okay so let's see what the linter says. Great, it fails. Let's see what the test says. Great, this fails too. I want to commit this first. Let's see for now if the linter, if the prettier works. Okay, it reformatted. 
but I want to also check if the git hook pre-commit works. Okay, it reformatted, but I want to also check if the git hook pre-commit works. So let's commit all of this. Okay, this looks okay. Let's call it configuration, initial project configuration. And let's see if the formatter was called. Great, it was called. No, let's push. Ah, uh -huh, just a second. I want the GitHub workflow. Nah, what the hell? Let's let's make it fail for now. Okay. If I refresh and go to actions, actions will have uh, what I said earlier. It will test uh, both for the platforms 15 and 16. It will definitely fail. But what I want to add to README is a status badge. You often see this on GitHub or Git, GitHub repositories. And it's a badge that's just an anchor in README. Just a second. Okay. Okay. Let's fix. Let's fix this. Just, I want the linter to succeed. Uh -huh. It needs a number, not an any. Let's push again. And see what our actions say. Obviously, we know why this is wrong. Well, this is running. I want to check if so. Finally, this test two jobs completed for node versions 15 and 16. And if I go to okay, if I refresh. The badge says passing. So this wraps our initial project setup. And now on to creating our actual collection. So I can remove these dummy files that were just used for testing if our scripts worked. So our collection is called location. And collection first is defined by an interface called a location. A just a value model interface that specifies all the properties. 
that I used in a collection. But the actual validation is done elsewhere. So location type is an enum type. And I like to write my enums with all cups. And no, let's keep it like a null. Okay. Uh, 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 I perform groups. Okay. The GeoJSON field, it's called the geometry. Type is needed because it can be a point, but it can also be a polygon. Point is defined by its two coordinates, latitude and longitude. And in the GeoJSON specification, longitude comes first. I know it's not intuitive, but it's the rule. Okay. And now define a schema. And schema is called the location schema. Okay. And the location schema is defined by a location interface. And now on to defining the types. Properties This is how I define enum fields and as for geometry, it's a longer definition. So type is string. And it's a required field. Coordinates are of type number. Uh, this index you need to define if you're doing geospatial queries. Uh, MongoDB won't allow any geospatial queries if to this sphere is not defined on a field. And since we're using, since I'm using a latitude and a longitude, I want to add an additional validation that will soon test. So it's not a number. have to be provided a number when specifying coordinates and if I don't get a number I want this message to be shown ok 
Okay. One more rule is that longitude can be in the range of minus 180 to plus 180. And as for latitude goes, it can be in the range of minus 90 to plus 90. And the last property is a self-referencing property. So it will contain an ID of the parent. Okay. And lastly, I want to export default collection, so it will be called location. Location schema, but that's not enough because if this schema is already compiled into a model, you will get an error. For instance, if you're using uh, cached uh, Mongoose collections, and I suggest you do so, because if you don't cache your collections, you might uh, get exponentially growing uh, connections in time. It doesn't matter if you close the connection or not, but uh, for instance, if you're running a REST API, let's imagine your user uh, refreshes a dozen times in a second, then you will get more and more connections in time. So if the schema is already compiled, it's compiled in models namespace, and it will be compiled as a model, or if it's not, short circuit to compiling a schema and exporting it as a default. So now on to location validation, location validate. Scenario will be called as a location validation and scenario will have a few test cases. By the way, I love this behavior driven structure and it's really readable to write a test like this in Vigest. So let's say that location should be invalid if properties are not defined. Hmm. Why did I say it's an ASIC? There is nothing else in here. So location is Let's see how I uh, just uh, recognized our source directory uh, aliasing. It already knows how to import, so it's cool. And let's see what the validation says about this property. Uh, I, if I call the save, it would, uh, under the hood, called validate sync. 
uh, Mongoose has a middleware, validation middleware that's set to be run on every project uh, pre-save. So if any of the properties fail, uh, if uh, any of the properties fail, Mongoose uh, doesn't save the object and returns an error. You uh, might You might want to uh, you might want to disable the validate before save. So if you want to disable the validation, just add this flag to false, and it won't run a validation hook. But I don't see the point in disabling this. And if you want to explicitly call validation, you would call validate sync. So what the error says, error has a message and message is validation, validation failed because geometry is required. Let's see what it says. Okay. It's rather cleaner. Location is also valid if null coordinates. So let's see what we have here when we run all of these tests. Okay. It passes and I can commit. So I deleted these dummy files, defined our schema and added validation tests. So let's call it add validation schema. And now on to defining our queries. Earlier mentioned I want to make recursive queries and geospatial queries. And for that purpose, I'll create an interface for instance methods and an interface for static methods. Instance methods will have descendants and parents. It will be similar queries, similar recursive queries, but in other directions. And I also take care that the level of recursion is returned. Uh, let's rather make it an interface. Question level. Okay. 
and this interface implementations will cover across the queries, but I also want one geospatial query. And it will be called in an interface a location model. That's an extension of a model of a location. And I'll call it nearby. Nearby takes latitude, longitude, and by the way, decimal latitude and longitude, and distance in kilometers. And it returns a location. Okay, let's make another type. Location. It will return a location array with appropriate distances. And distance is a number. Okay. As for implementations, let's first implement instance methods. So we'll implement descendants and we'll also implement parents. But let's first implement descendants. To be able to run a recursive query, you need an aggregate pipeline and an aggregate pipeline will be one of the steps will be a graph lookup. So it says here, starting point is ID. And ID connects to parent. That field is marked as a level. And if you want to be extra safe, you can specify end of recursion. For example, if you defined a location that has a parent of self, you would have an infinite loop. But uh, Maybe not specifying max depth would indicate, uh, would help indicate an error in your design. So I'd like to leave it out. And the sentence field will be a top level document. So to be able to make it to top, I need to unwind them first. And replace root. And new root will be the result, the result of a graph lookup. I forgot the first case of pipeline, since this is an instance method, this query has to be in relation to the instance of a location. So this should always be the first case. Okay. So as for parents, it will be a similar query, but in opposite direction. So instead of starting with an ID, we'll start with the parent. And parent connects to ID. Result of a graph lookup will be called parents. And same thing, we want to make 
parents as a top level of the document. And we can achieve it with unwind and replace root. Next, on to defining a static method. Our static method is called a nearby. And it receives distance in kilometers and the line altitude and a longitude. Okay. So it will be another query. and another aggregate and it will contain just one pipe it's a geoneer so everything that's near this coordinates so, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but in a GeoJSON specification is always that longitude comes first. Result of GeoNear will have also a distance field. Minimum distance that should be specified is zero. You can go for any positive number and as for distance kilometers they need to be turned into meters and geoneer looks up into geometry field why because geometry field has an index of that's called uh, 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 to the sphere if the index is not there, uh, I'm afraid this query wouldn't work. And it's a spherical query. So what it means is include any of the documents whose coordinates are inside the radius of max distance. Okay, so I need to change the export. It's not enough to export as a model location because I couldn't access my static and instance methods. So I created earlier a location model. And the location model is a compiled schema and this should be added also. What else? Our slint, slint compiles. So I'll add another rule in slint. Let's see because I don't want it to complain. So let's see what it complains about. Where was it? Okay. So let's see if the linter works. And test should also work because nothing has changed. Okay, all the tests pass, but my coverage is a little bit less because I added additional code. So let's create another test. And our test 
will test our locations model, our queries. But for this test, I need the previously installed MongoDB memory server. So first off, I'll create a utility. Utility is called DB Connect. And DB Connect uh, creates and caches Mongoose connection. Uh, if the connection is already uh, there, it's the, it's the register in the global scope. And if it's not already there, we connect to the Mongoose, or otherwise MongoDB uh, server, in our case, MongoDB memory server, and register that promise and MongoD connection to the global scope. And this is not enough. Uh, describe test case should have a before all setup. And what the before all uh, does, it connects to our database. We don't have populate yet, but we'll have it in a second. And after all, what it does, it clears the global scope, deletes all connections, and finally closes our connection. Okay, now I'm missing a populate, and populate uh, is command that just registers, inserts our test fixtures. Okay. And for this test case, I'll create a single country, three cities, and three districts. Let's see what the populate says. Okay, if I try to run the test, I think it should complain that there is no test case. Yes, my test suite should contain at least one test case. Let's make a test case. Okay. For this test case, <coughs> Croatia is a top level location. So you should uh, return all of the locations created after it as a descendant. So let's see. In the debug mode, what exactly it returns. Okay. So, as I said, all of the crea locations created after Croatia are descendants. And, for instance, Gripve is the last level location, the district, and it's on level 1. City is on level 0. Let's paste other test cases. You can check the code in the GitHub repository. I'll share the link after. Okay. So I explained the first test case. Croatia should contain all of the locations created after that. But Gripe, since Gripe is a district, it's the last level location and the sentence for Gripe should be zero. 
The other direction for parents is the other way around. So Gripe should contain a city and a country. So it's in city split and in the country Croatia. If I debug this test case, it returns. Okay, as I said, it returns uh, hierarchically. So it's in city split and in country Croatia. And parents are equal to two. And uh, for top level location, parents should be zero. And as for all nearby locations, I picked up a spot just a second. For this location, uh, I mentioned earlier, I created a city, Croatia, a country, Zagreb, and a district, Chernomeritz, which is here. And for this test case, let's use a pinpoint over here. It doesn't matter because I want to copy these coordinates and coordinates are copied here. The last argument is distance of 10 kilometers. I suppose this location should return nearby three locations. First location is the country Croatia because its center is in the capital city of Zagreb, where I put it. Next one is Zagreb and next one is district Chernomeritz. It's not in this district of merits, but uh, the query says, show me anything that's in distance of three, uh, 10 kilometers. Let's see if I'm right. Okay, I'm right. So before committing, I want to run a linter and test. Okay, we can commit this code. Last part of this tutorial is publishing a package to the GitHub private npm registry. So for that purpose, I'll create an npm rc configuration. And what it says here when publishing to the npm package github com registry, read from this out token. Previously exported this token for writing packages. You can create it by going to developer settings and create new out token. Just remember to check the write packages permission. This is a prefix of the package I'll publish. Okay. Uh, for if you, for instance, have a private flag set to true, uh, remove it because that flag only helps you from accidentally publishing a package. And this configuration says uh, don't publish to npm.js, but publish to the GitHub npm registry. Our main file is going to be a dist location. I've defined the main file. And files I want to publish are all located in dist directory. So we have scripts test, lint, and prettier. For build to this directory, I need TSC. 
and I'll need a pre-publish only configuration, which is a hook that runs prior to publishing. And what I want to run is, I want to check if it's all formatted fine, if the tests are okay. And I want to go. Okay. So let's see what the pre-publish only says. That's okay. So it published to <coughs> my directory registry. And when I refresh, in the right sidebar, I can see packages link to demo Mongoose TypeScript. And the latest version that I just published is 1.04. NPM install is the same as with any NPM package, but if you're going to use your private package, you would probably need in your NPM RC configuration something like this. Point to registry and uh, give the out token, and I suggest you use uh, read packages token, not the write one. So you do check permission for reading from packages. And you should have no issues uh, pulling uh, or installing the NPM package.